the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a big fan of using panelling. The lower third of the wall is what gets battered the most in a family home, whether it's push chairs, scooters, or washing baskets, or anything like that. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We've got a stud wall here, plasterboard, and it's skimmed. It's not been skimmed very well. The plasterer who did this did a terrible job. That's another reason why I want to panel it. Now, some people do, you'll see, just put their panelling strips onto a wall, paint the whole lot, and try and pass it off as all wooden panelling. And it just never looks quite right unless you've got a really flawless finish on the inside of the panels. If it's already had emulsion, it just doesn't look quite right. So the first thing I want to do is put our baseboard onto here, or backer board, whatever we're going to call it. So I cut this one ready. This is 6mm moisture resistant MDF, and that's just going to give us that really smooth finish. Now you'll notice here I've put a strip of architrave. Our lining isn't in, the door isn't in. This is going to, at some point, go through to a, an extension. But for now, I need to put this exactly where it is so I know where to stop up to and we can replace this in the future. And then down the other end, we've already boxed in our heating controls and pipe work. When I come to actually fit this, we want to make sure it's nice and level. And we'll just put a couple of shims under the bottom so it's not sitting directly on our laminate flooring. But I'm happy with that. We've got a relatively straight wall that with this 6mm it will kind of pull in and follow the contours of the wall. And then I've done exactly the same on this side. This one I just want to cut a little bit back here. We've got this quite fussy little return in on the corner, but we'll come back to that. The adhesive is going to be the bit that's doing the work. The brads that I've just put in there are just basically holding it in tight to the wall. So even just those 18 gauge brads are enough to hold it into the plasterboard. Um, but you could just hand nail it or even screw it. Remember the top section here, we're going to have a rail. We're going to have skirting board down the bottom and the both ends are going to be covered. So you could almost work out exactly where everything's going to go and that way you haven't got any holes to fill. Um, but you can, you know that you're safe. Top 85mm, uh, the bottom 150mm or so, uh, you can put everything in there. But obviously, think about where your cables and pipes might be. All right, now we can move on to the next bit. I've run out of the moisture resistant six mil, couldn't find any more locally, and I wanted to get this done today. So I've picked up um, a sheet of the better quality regular stuff, um, which should be fine. Everything's off the floor anyway. So what we want to do is install our bottom bit first. I've cut to size, blue pizza style. Again, we'll lift it up off the floor a little bit. This one, we definitely want to make sure it's level. All of our verticals are going to be sat square onto this. So 
So there's a couple of things to point out. The adhesive you use, you want to make sure. In the past, I've tried grip fill and all those sort of um, adhesives. They're fine, but when they skin up, they stay keep everything proud off the surface. They don't squeeze nice and flat and hold it tight. So while it doesn't matter quite as much for these, um, something that's thinner setting, either a water-based one or a polymer one like that, uh, just tends to work much better. Then when it comes to actually gluing on the strips, you can either use a standard wood glue or you can use the same stuff as long as it will push flat. So you can see down here, even with that polymer adhesive, we've still got a nice tight join there. Um, wood glue will obviously work the same way. What I want to minimize is the amount of pinholes that we put in the visible sections because it just means more filling. We're gonna just put the vertical sections in between the two rails. In traditional joinery, those verticals, those styles would go from the bottom of the door or the bottom of the panel right to the top. Your rails would fit in between those with a mortise and tenon. So these are the doors I made last year and I've basically matched the same width rails and styles. And while it's hard to make out, these are traditionally made hardwood doors. So these styles, I cut the groove in, go all the way to the top, but again, you can't really see that join anyway. If you're gonna have a skirting board along the bottom, let me find a bit of skirting board. Normally the way I do it, if I am gonna put a skirting board along the bottom, which I want to do in this room because elsewhere we'll just have the same skirting board but no paneling. If I do want to use a molding like this for a skirting board, I wanna make sure that this height here is the same width as I'm using for all of the rest of the trim. So the way I've worked that out is just simply by adding my 85 millimeters to the height of my skirting board, then I cut that piece at the bottom. The other way you can do it is just have this slightly beyond the top of the skirting board and then just use a little off cut as a packer at the bottom. It's easy enough to go this route, it's pennies really. So that's gonna go on there and then our pre-cut styles will sit like so and then everything will get painted white. So I ripped all my strips down yesterday. I used a track saw, in the past I've used a table saw. It doesn't really matter. Even the circular saw with a guide is really uh, an efficient way to do it. Just make sure that you've got a decent blade in that's gonna leave you with a fine finish because these are actually gonna be visible. We're not gonna be using a trim on the inside like I have done in the past. When you're using six mil, you just make basically making it look like a shaker door. So we'll leave that square. And if you haven't got a table saw or a track saw, you can still do it. You know, like I always say, it's not about finding an excuse, it's about finding a solution. So if you can't do it yourself, then just buy the strip wood. You can buy pine plain strip wood, four or six mil thick, um, and just buy the width you want. It's gonna cost more, but you don't have to have the tools to do it. You can cut down the backboard yourself, or you can just go into the store and get them to cut down strips of MDF on their big panel saw. So I know the top of this is perfectly level, I know the bottom trim is perfectly level, so theoretically all of the verticals should be the same. Right, we've got a dust sheet down, we're ready for action now. First thing to do is to get this top one put on and then we can run the styles in. Um, what I have been doing is running down, making the cuts in there. The workshop's an absolute mess at the moment, so I'm not gonna be filming in there. Now one thing I was thinking about is that adhesive is probably no good for painting. Um, so if you've got anything, a bit like silicon, it's a disaster for paint. So maybe the answer is wood glue for these sections because if you get any smear on here, it could be a bit of a nightmare. Right, now we can test fit the verticals. I'll cut these a bit long so we can creep up on the join. That's about a millimeter off, same there. Yeah, so about half a blade's width to nip off those. Take four, shorten those, and get them put in.
So we've got our verticals all cut, they're just kind of friction fit in there just for now. I've now worked out roughly that I want about this sort of spacing. So I'm going to go for four panels. All I need to do then is just take the length of the wall minus five times the width of our verticals and then that will give me, and then divide it by four, and that will give me these spacings and we can just get everything penciled in. Once we're happy, then it can go on, then we can move on to the other wall, then we can have lunch and then we can work on skirting. Time for the maths. Let's just work out our spacing. So 217 is our total. So 2170 minus 45 equals 1745 of spaces. Divide that by 4 equals 436252. 436 between. We'll work off this end because this ends a fixed point. It's worth taking the time to get this bit right. You don't really want much of a gap there at all because filler in there, even if you fill it nicely, sand it, things change over time and you'll always get something showing up there. Neither do you want to have it jammed in and bowing out and force it tight. So it's worth just sneaking up on the cut. You should get to a point where it's just nice and flush. Friction will hold it in place and you're not forcing it anywhere. Oh, we got there in the end. Everything is now as it should be. All I need to do is run a 22 and a half degree mitre down the end of this one so we can return it into that architrave. Everything else is just friction fit. So we can now move on to gluing them up. Both sides are ready. What I have spotted is because we use that thicker adhesive, gun adhesive, this one is probably half a millimetre proud of here. Which doesn't sound much, but when you paint everything, it's going to be really visible. So it's a bit of a pain. Um, arguably, these will stick out the same amount if we use the same adhesive, but I think I'm going to move back to wood glue, like I've always done in the past, and then these will sit a bit tighter on. My shoe's growing. <laughs> What is going on? It's not Easter. What are you wearing? You found it, was she on? And... You can see Hot Little Bunny! Ah, oh, she... <laughs> Bye! Right, what I've switched to doing now, to make sure, what you don't want to do is get glue on something, put it up and adjust it and smear and have glue visible. So before I even get it on the wall, I know where my top mark is, just levelling it up and then making a mark. That's it, side one is done. A handful of holes to fill after we've done the undercoat, but we can leave that to dry now. Just check that it's pulled in tight, because what you don't want is any gaps, because the paint will crack. The 
last of the uprights, I've put a back cut of 22 and a half degrees here on the end. That way we can put another piece in here and return it into here. Into here and here, 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 here. Now, like I was saying, this side's a little bit different. These two aren't far off these ones and they match up, which is the most important thing. At the far end, after you've gone up the step, we were just trying to work out, Joe and I were looking at it, and you can either split that into two thin ones, or you can leave it wider. When you're up by it, there's nothing to compare to. When you're down here, it's so far away that perspective makes it look similar to these anyway. So we're going to leave it as it is. All right, next thing to do is put a trim along the top. There's a few ways of doing that. In the hallway, we've used just a normal dado rail if we don't want it to stick out too much. In the playroom, we've done quite a big ledge so you can actually put pictures and stuff on it. In this case, I've just got a simple pencil round, um, I guess it's architrave, but kind of off the shelf trim. And I wanted to see how that fits. I think, as I thought would be the case, I'm gonna have to take maybe 10, 15 mil off the back of it, just so it doesn't stick out quite so much. All right, now we're onto the really fussy bit, for me at least. We're gonna take this skirting board along, up a few mitres over the step, and then replicate that on the other side. Then down here, I've kind of messed up with the step. I should have kept that laminate in a little bit longer so that the nosing could slot over it. So I need to rethink that, but I'm gonna fit it in between our skirting boards. So this step up, I'm gonna go ahead and do now put it together in one piece and then we can work back. So I've cut the bits, one that takes me to the edge of the step, another section to drop me down. So I think I'm happy with all this now. So you can see I put this extra piece in here to make sure that I've got an 85 mil reveal all the way around. It looks a bit odd now, but I think once it's painted up, that was the best option. The other option was to bring a style, you know, one of the vertical pieces down at this point, but then it just didn't really work. Anyway, I'm gonna take this down. I might just biscuit those two. That'll hold it together. And we'll use mitre bond as well, then we can fit it straight away. Right, a couple of days off to renovate and decorate two bedrooms on the house. Now we're back on this panelling and hopefully we can get it painted today. 
So I've just finished up the last section of skirting. Now there's lots of ways to do things like this, but where possible, I'm always a fan of assembling first uh, and then fitting it. That way you can make sure these joins are as tight as you want. Um, these ones are just biscuited with wood glue. And then this end one here, where you can see I've just returned it into the door frame, uh, into the architrave. I've just used some mitre bond. Right, I'm happy with how all that's fitting. So we'll get it out, adhesive on, fit it in, and then we'll start the filling. go that was an exhausting couple of days but we managed to pull it off I will admit that the parts were kind of cut and the back of all have been has been leaning here for about six months but we finally got on and did it there are a few things that I would change and there are a few other options which I probably didn't mention of course you could do all of this in solid wood you could paint it or you could stain it or, or whatever you want to do but there's lots of options and you could also of course go a much more traditional route with proper joinery this is a really straightforward way to do things and really needs minimal tools, but it's a quite effective and bespoke way of kind of cladding or panelling different parts of the house, both from, a, both from a kind of practical point of view and also aesthetics. Now, as far as what went to plan and what didn't go to plan, the layout worked pretty well. Of course, the walls are different. There's a door on this side. So what I wanted to do is make sure that the steps were matching. Either side of the step was uh, a kind of mirror image. That way when you're coming in, you're visually seeing that bit, it, it kind of works. From there on, on this side of the wall, we split it into four, nice and straightforward, and you know everything's even. On this side, because 
it's a different length and also it's kind of well it's got this door for a start the first vertical is almost bang on and so is the second to be fair it's it's a hard one to pick out if you didn't know um, but that end, like you saw in the video, we decided to leave a larger panel. Now from the experience of doing a couple of other rooms in the house, don't necessarily restrict yourself to think every single panel around the room needs to be the same size. If you've got a three meter wall and a four meter wall, then it makes sense to divide those down equally. And the panels might be slightly off, but they'll be even along each wall. And the eye kind of sees that in a better way, rather than trying to carry it around and then end up with a small panel there's an infill right at the end in one corner. Now I've got at least one more coat to go on here. And what you saw me do is start off with an MDF sealer. That's only really because the cut edges on here, we're not putting a trim. On the other room, we've used 12 mil and every single one has a slightly profiled molding in there just to give it a bit more of a raised panel look. Because we're leaving this edge exposed, cut MDF is not ideal for painting. So by putting the sealer on and then giving it a sand, it stayed nice and smooth. Then I went on with the primer undercoat, which is just the normal Leyland paint that I use. Um, I spray this, brush it, roll it. It's always my go-to for anything I'm doing uh, woodwork-wise. It's, it's, pr it's pretty quick drying um, and you can get a relatively flat finish. Of course, if you've seen other projects that I've done, usually I use the airless sprayer. Uh, for woodwork trim and that sort of stuff and it's a super flat finish um, and, but more on that in a second and then for the finish this time normally I've been using the Leyland eggshell white the porch project behind me used that other bits in the house um, and cabinets I've done that route this is the satin which is the same as I've got on cabinets in here I rolled this this is this one here um, Upstairs yesterday I used the airless spray, I sprayed all the rooms, skirting boards, architraves, flawless, smooth finish. It just, it dries so quick that the roller, I'm just not happy <laughs> with the finish. So I think I will give this a bit of a rub back and then accept that um, I might mask up and just give it the final coat, really nice fine spray over the lot. Uh, equally, it's easier to touch up when it's left like this. So it's a bit of a balancing act. It, I think personally that the sprayed finish when you've got a much smoother finish is easier to keep clean but on the flip side if you've got a scuff and you want to touch it up then you need to load up the little sprayer rather than just coming in with a roller. Anyway that's just an individual type thing. Actually in the other room I used an oil based paint uh, years ago and I brushed it and you can just get a much more timeless sort of traditional look. These panels are quite large but I guess you could still do nice light brush strokes just to give it more of a uh, sort of period look, I guess. The filling of all the holes that happened were uh, was just a normal two-part, I think it's the Ron Seal one. Again, super quick and easy. I do skim a little bit over these joins and then you can sand it completely smooth. Right, more answers hopefully before people ask. The adhesive I use to put it onto the back is just a multi six, just a Sika Flex type uh, or Sika product. Uh, that is super easy to use and really cheap and easily to easy to find. Wood glue, I just use this D4 stuff that I already had. Just make sure that if you're using a weatherproof or outdoor type glue, that you wipe off any excess because paint just struggles to take anywhere there so make sure you're wiping off any squeeze out and then you might have seen on the joins I was just using not that Mitre Bond loads of brands of this it's just a two parts essentially a super glue like a CA glue and an activator smack the two bits together and you get a really quick easy bond it's not super strong but where you've got uh, little mitres and things it's a super easy way to work without having to worry about clamps or pinning it in and then finally another tool that I'm bound to get asked about the nailer and um, if you're starting out on a renovation and on a minimal tool basis you've got a few bits I would say an 18 gauge nailer is actually a really good purchase it can be a little bit daunting thinking about nail guns and stuff as a DIY and um, it's not necessarily one of your first tools that you pick up but actually if you're doing a full house renovation and you've got things like skirting boards or architraves, dado rails, pitcher rails, it's a really good way um, of not necessarily there for strength but just giving you either an extra hand because you're working alone and you need to just pin things in place 
or just holding things until your adhesive sets. So um, and cladding and things like that, just lightweight stuff, it's a really good way to go. This Ryobi nailer is actually, in my view, a very, very decent little tool. I don't know any of the other Ryobi tools because it's the only one I've ever bought. But by all accounts, this 18 gauge got quite a good reputation. Uh, they do a 16 as well, and I think a stapler. But anyway, I will leave a link to those down in the description that you can find out uh, about those there. Like I said, we've got one more coat to go here, but I'm not in an immediate rush to do that. It's been a long old week on the decorating front. We've managed to decorate and snag three rooms in the house, carpet down and move the kids back into those. So we've got all new bedrooms. There will be a video coming out on that soon. Um, and also I've moved to a larger airless sprayer. So I actually sprayed, oh, I didn't use any rollers or brushes in any of the rooms upstairs. So that's something new. Uh, which will be shared in the next week or so once we've got done the editing on those. Still a fair bit to do here. I've got to hang these two little shaker doors for the um, engine room. The control heating controls, sock cock and things like that. And get these walls painted with another final coat. There was a bit of messing around up there. Um, just because I wasn't happy with the flat finish. Or lumpy finish. So I've uh, managed to flatten out that wall. We'll get that painted and this room will almost be done. One day I'll get around to doing an overview, sort of tour of the house and maybe some floor plans. If you haven't watched the channel for that long, then you might not know that we're actually in the old garage. So the other side of the here is the original stone wall, external wall of the house. The porch behind me with the green wall, that oak porch links from our outside, our old outside side door um, into that porch and then through to here. We've got another door to hang actually at the top of this hallway just to isolate the two bits if we ever want to. Now this uh, formed a utility or a raised floor here that I put in, a shower room, bathroom bit in there, and then it goes down into the larger room which is currently the workshop and will soon in the next few weeks become Joe's studio. So what we've actually gained is three nice sized rooms to the house um, from what was just literally a tumble down concrete garage with an asbestos roof. Um, and it, hopefully it's really added a practical part to the house because uh, older houses are not necessarily well thought out for family, modern family life. So things like no downstairs bathrooms now it, or toilets, even in larger houses, no kind of space for laundry and things like that. So this is what this is all about. That's why we like things to be practical and hopefully a little bit designy at the same time. So like I said, just being able to wipe stuff down and keep everything separate in here is a good option for messy kids and messy husbands. Anyway, there we go. If you haven't seen the short and sharp overview video, then I will stick it up here, along with some other paneling videos if I can find them. Remember, we are full on into our workshop project, so that is coming up. Make sure you subscribe, give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and any questions I didn't answer, stick them down below. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.